Hi, this is Meredith Grimsley, and I am coming to you um, in an untraditional way. Um, I was slated to have an exhibition at the Gallery at the Greenlee Center in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania uh, in March, no, excuse me, May of this year. And this work that was to be on display is that of my sabbatical, which took place a couple years ago. And I was really excited to share that work with uh, the university and the community. And of course, these unrelenting times have um, left that in the dust. And then um, Scott Roper, the gallery director, and I made a plan to try to open again in September. And uh, our plans were quickly thwarted yet again by this, um, by this virus that just won't let go. So what we came up with was a kind of miniature version of the show. And it is at the Greenlee Center, but it's in the windows. So you'll get to see some of my work through the window at a distance. But I wanted to take some time to share with you... Uh, what I what I was working with and so I'm gonna show you a little few little slides of some of the work that's in the show some that's not going to be in the show uh, but just as a touch point to understand what you're seeing and what I'm doing as an artist um, this this time has taken so much creativity and it has also drained a lot of creativity. But uh, I'm here to show that I'm still fighting. Uh, the Department of Art and Art History is still working hard and fighting too. And we haven't given up on our mission to bring you um, stimulating, thought-provoking work. And I hope mine delivers in that way. Thanks so much. Um, enjoy the slideshow. Enjoy the walk by the Greenlee Gallery show. And, you know, if you have any questions, you can always contact me. I'll have my contact information at the end of the slideshow. Um, I'd love to chat. Have a great day. From the day we are born to the day we die, we are wrapped in fiber. It has been a second skin, ushered us into this world, kept us warm, made us fashionable, embraced us in fear, love, memory, and nostalgia adorned us in ceremony, ornamented the spaces we occupy, been passed down through families in heirloom and practice, and will usher us out when we pass from this world. Our interaction with textiles is the longest sustained physical relationship we have in our lives. Other than our own body, it is the only material that will always accompany us through life, disposable to sacred. Further, fiber art is made from materials which are perceived to be delicate or fragile. Yet, when a fiber artwork is made, the materials can withstand incredible physical manipulation, harsh chemical environments, extreme temperatures. It is beaten, stomped, tied, knotted, tangled, pierced with needles, and still remains strong or becomes stronger. This is simply awesome. I am moved by the metaphorical capabilities of fiber as an artistic medium and as a conduit to the subconscious. As a 45-year-old woman, what my work has given me at this point in my life is a deeply painful yet liberating perspective that I have labored under a personal fiction most of my life. My work reveals the veil of self-deception I have constructed over my depression and childhood trauma. As a coping mechanism for trauma, personally created fairy tales have clouded my vision and my ability to live in truth. As an artist, I correlate dysfunctional family legacies through both personal experience and epigenetics to reveal the psychological and genetic traits that each generation inherits. I see that within families, significant events, words, and behaviors occur and are absorbed into our daily routine without examination. Some happen over time or in a breath. Our minds and bodies are formed. However, whatever residue embeds through nature and nurture, we have the opportunity to, de to deconstruct those wounds and reclaim our spiritual identity, our spiritual birthright. Now I find myself in eager pursuit of truth. To my audience, I whisper about my search with the physical, indelible mark of the stitch and the language of fiber. 
Throughout my work, I am ushered into radical acceptance of self-worth. I am given the gift to reconnect with the mysteries of life. Perfectly timed pain, confrontation of darkness, embracing true love, seeking forgiveness, practicing gratitude, nurturing friendships, the endurance of the human spirit, and accepting the gift of God's healing grace. The following words are not mine, but they call to me at every level of my life and work. Psalm 139, 1 through 3, 13 through 15. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. And finally, Te Piwa Magube's poem, You Are Oceanic. All she wanted was to find a place to stretch her bones and spread her hair, a place where her legs could walk without cutting and bruising, a place unchained. She was born out of the ocean breath. I reminded her, stop pouring so much of yourself into hearts that have no room for themselves. Do not thin yourself. Be vast. You do not bring the ocean to a river. Thank you, everyone. I hope to hear from you. Uh, Have a great day. Bye-bye.